Okay, here's a video that everyone wanted. It's some actual technical information on these cut down six by four quotes unbreakable props. And what I've got here is a standard five inch un unbreakable, as we call them, although we know they're not unbreakable, but we've got the standard five inch one here. And I'm going to run that up and get two figures. I'm going to get the maximum thrust figure, and I'm going to get the figures for running the motor at about idle thrust. If we say the average quadcopter, let's say, let's be generous 600 grams, four motors, 150 grams of thrust per motor, that should be your hover thrust. So let's see how they perform in terms of maximum power and efficiency. So let's first of all go for the 150 grams of thrust and see what that gives us in terms of power draw and performance. Here we go, 3.3 amps was the draw at hover power, 150 grams. Okay, let's see what we get out of this thing now for maximum power and maximum thrust. Nine point eight amps and about three hundred and twenty grams of thrust. I'd better write that down too. Okay, I fitted the cut down bull nose, unbreakable now, and we'll just see what we get out of this. Go into watts, see what we get in terms of first of all the idle, or I mean the hover power. So we'll go up to one hundred and fifty grams of thrust. get it nailed down 2.9 amps that was very interesting down to 2.9 amps for the hover current so that's a lot more efficiency and as I said when I flew these props I sort of felt I, I did get an extended flight time when I was flying around gently I was quite surprised how much more flight time I got went up from you know, by about a minute, which is quite a bit. So yeah, we're drawing much less power at the hover power. So that's really interesting. Now let's um, wind this up and see what we get in terms of maximum power, maximum current draw. It's going to be very interesting. Well, there you go, there are the figures. Um, definitely more power, uh, definitely draws more current, and um, I have to calculate the efficiency, but yeah, definitely a lot more power out of this little. This is the Quantum motor, the Quantum 2204. It's a mid range motor, it's nothing flash. Um, these are, you know, sort of Hobby King motors. But yeah, I'm, you know, the difference between the props is marked. It's very, very marked. Now let's do some figures and work out what the results are. Now I almost forgot to test the bullnose props, the HQ bullnose props. I've put one on here now. Let's run it through the same barrage of tests and compare the figures for that. All right, first up we're going to go for the hover power, 150 grams. Let's see what we get. Three point one amps, and now we'll go for the full power. And a bit of clear the bench because these are pretty powerful props in the setup. So we'll see what we get out of this thing. We wind the taps right up. Now that was interesting. Well, some very interesting information there, some surprises in fact. Uh, 
you now realize how inefficient those unbreakable props are. I always said when I first flew them, they really do lack punch. They're unbreakable, but you do lose performance. And you do lose quite a bit of performance because previously, you know, the bullnose props, the HQ bullnose props were not high performers. You'll see in my earlier prop tests that they just didn't score that well compared to the gem fans or even the carbon fiber blades that we've been using in the past. So it was quite surprising therefore to see that the HQ bullnose in this test outperformed those five inch uh, unbreakables by quite a margin and the HQ bullnose was very close to the the unbreakable bullnose. Oh, what do I call them? I call them the DAL. They're a DAL prop. Mate, that's, the name, that's the name on them, DAL. So the DAL bullnose performs actually a bit better than the HQ bullnose. Now some of that I have to say right now is probably because I've just used one battery in these tests, very quick tests, so the battery voltage will have dropped a bit. So I would expect that the bullnose HQs are probably almost certainly maybe a little bit more powerful than the DAL bullnose but hey the difference it's a hair's whisker you know it's nothing it's very very little so when we looked at the figures we found let's just compare the uh, DAL bullnose to the unbreakable DAL 5 inch and I found that the um, the cut down props the DAL bullnose the cut down ones we do ourselves we're getting um, we're using six watts less power in the hover it's, that's an 18% improvement in efficiency over the 5 inch. The cut down 6s are 18% more efficient. And remember I spoke when I did the first video on this and I said, well, I got an extra minute of flight time. I was quite impressed. Well, if you go from 5 minutes to 6 minutes, that's 20%. So I was pretty close. I was pretty close on the money when I said I was getting about an extra minute of flight time. Very impressive indeed. So yeah, that's great stuff. Now you're getting also 34% more thrust out of the... Um, cut down props 34 percent now that's a huge amount that's over a third more power more thrust and you're getting it at the cost of 35 percent power so the efficiency um, doesn't change much and in fact at full power the efficiency is about 2.8 grams of thrust per watt of power which is not too bad actually now if we bring in those hq bull nose um, they are doing pretty much the same as the cut down dals We've got, uh, on the test we did there, we had 153 watts, which is just two watts less than the, um, than the DAL props, the cut down DALs. We were getting 418 grams of thrust, which is just really 10 grams less than the DALs. Now, as I say, that may be because the battery is a little bit flatter after three tests, so that might explain that. They're pretty much on a par, they really are. Now, the DAL props cut down, the Saval Zone 6s cut down to 5s, they obviously perform very well. And it, but they are fragile. I mean, you know, the fives are pretty bulletproof. I went out today, did some more testing, and I had just one set of the cut down Saval Zone props, and I had a modest crash. It wasn't, you know, I just messed up on a corner and it just bounced a bit. But I broke a prop, both broke both both blades off at the hub, which is where a lot of people have said that's how they break. They break the blades off at the hub. This did exactly that. Broke two blades off at the hub. I didn't have spare cut down props, so I went back to the five inch. And I flew all day with many, many crashes without breaking a single five inch prop. So these six inches, I don't know what it is. What, is it, surely it's the same plastic. So there must be something in the design that makes them more prone to breaking and they break at the hub. So maybe it's because they're a bit stiffer because they're thicker, they've got more cord. So therefore more of the load is imparted onto the hub and that's where they break, I don't know. But they don't expect them to be bulletproof. They are not bulletproof. They're probably stronger than the HQ bullnose, but not that much. The benefit might be that they're cheap, they're probably cheaper than the HQ, and the performance is right up there. It's just six of one, half a dozen of another. The only thing I did notice was that I'm using the cut down 6x4s, and the bullnose are 6x4.5, so they've got an extra half an inch of pitch, which should give you more speed. But I didn't have a way of measuring that other than subjective. It would have been a waste of time because the difference is so small. So there, bottom line, if you want to buy unbreakable props, you want to buy these props from Saval Zone, whatever, the DAL props, if you want bulletproof, unbreakable, you know, really, really hard to break, get the five inch, five by four. They really, really are incredibly hard to break. I've tried, I've put a lot of effort into trying to break them and they do break, but very infrequently, you know, a couple of sets on a day, despite the number of crashes, that's brilliant. If you want a lot more efficiency and we're talking 34, 35% more power and 18% more efficiency, then take, buy the six inches, cut them down to five and you'll get a five by four with much more blade area. It's quieter. It makes better use of your battery power, but they're fragile. I, don't, I say fragile reservedly because obviously any prop's gonna break, but they are nowhere near as bulletproof as the five inches. So I su suspect you wanna get some of each. Use the cut down ones for racing, 
use the straight five inch ones for proximity, having a ball just when you know you're going to be crashing a lot. That's probably the best way to go. So there you go. Those are the figures people wanted to see. I've done the tests. There's the information. You can make your own decisions. That's what we do here at RC Model Reviews. Give you the information you need to make informed decisions when you buy stuff so you don't waste your money. Thank you for watching. If you've got any more questions or comments, stick them in the space below the description of this video, kindly provided by YouTube. And now I must get back to the bench. Actually, I've got to get back to the editing desk because I've got so much to edit up. See you later. Bye for now.